Today I'm going to take you to Terrain at Styers. This is a cafe slash store slash garden in the middle of Pennsylvania. Kind of outside Philadelphia. It's in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. And this is honestly one of my favorite places. It's such a gem. I think they have weddings here, so it could be a wedding venue. But every time I come here, I leave really inspired and wanting to craft and knit and just make my home look really nice. So this is sort of the nursery slash garden area. And first we're going to stop by the cafe and get something to eat. And then I'll take you guys shopping. If you haven't already, make sure to take a minute and subscribe to my channel. And also leave me a comment and let me know what you're thinking of my videos and what you'd like to see in the future. So this is the cafe and they have indoor and outdoor seating. I've always sat indoors before, but just because of COVID and everything, we decided to sit outside. I'll show you a little bit of the inside, but unfortunately I didn't get to film like in the greenhouse ish area. Um, I'll try to do that next time. One of the things I really like about Terrain is how in tune they are with the seasons. So they'll change up their flower arrangements seasonally and also the menu in the cafe changes depending on the season and features farm fresh produce. And I thought this area was so fun. I love how they have these little hanging terrariums on the wall. It makes me feel like I'm in a really old conservatory like in the game of Clue. And the rest of the place has sort of a farmhouse feel to it so it's very rustic and just so fun. I came here in October when my mom was visiting me and we just decided to have lunch here. So this is not my first time dining at Terrain but I haven't been here in quite a while. I always like to get a cheese board to start with here because I think that they put it together so well it's really pretty and then I'll usually get a couple of main dishes to share. When I come with my husband, he usually wants something more meaty, but I tend to go towards the vegetarian side. I got a burrata salad with beets and tangerines, and this is the flower pot bread that they make. I actually bought a kit to make this at home, but I haven't yet made it. And for some reason, there were so many bees buzzing around our table, but um, luckily no one got stung. So this is the inside of the store and we went right before Halloween so they had all of the Halloween items out. I could not resist this adorable little mousy. Oh my gosh. This was a needle felted piece and I used to do needle felting. I still have a lot of supplies but I can't imagine making this right now. One thing that I wanted to make for my girls but I never did was like a little mouse or a bunny that lives inside of an Altoids tin with a little bed and toys and furniture. I mean, now that I'm saying this, I think I should probably go ahead and make that before they outgrow those kinds of things. If you ever do, really. Um, but yeah, something on my to-do list for Christmas. I can't resist these Matryoshka dolls. I love these. My daughter Sienna, when she was around three years old, two or three years old, she really loved playing with these. She thought they were so fun and she used to call them a stomachist because that meant stomach and inside of the stomach of every character you can find another character. So she used to play with these all the time. So this area had all kinds of cute little gifts and stocking stuffers, a hummingbird feeder and some binoculars some cards with prompts to tell campfire stories. I thought that was really creative and fun. If we went camping, this would be a good thing to purchase. Although it might be hard to read these by the light of the campfire. Do you guys remember Smokey the Bear? Only you can prevent forest fires. I can't believe they're selling this in terrain. I thought this little garden patch thing was so cute. I love the little fairies that are on the front. And this looks like a little herb garden that you can plant. They had a lot of these little seed paper things, which are basically just seeds embedded in biodegradable paper. And here's a cute little terrarium kit. And look at this rustic wooden box. It looks like something that you could put recipe cards in. Back in the days when people used to write their 
recipes on a little index card. My grandma actually had a little wooden box where she kept uh, all her recipe cards. I love the rainbow colors on this Happy Thanksgiving sign. That one is by Mary Mary and I've seen it at paper stores too. I keep looking at it and thinking about getting it. It's around 20 something dollars though, so it's kind of pricey and I feel like it's something I could make on my own. This really intrigued me. It's called Flying Wish Paper and when I looked at this, I just thought about when we went to Taiwan and we released a paper lantern into the sky. But the thing is you have to light it on fire at the bottom so it could be a little dangerous and I'm afraid that it might land somewhere and catch something on fire. This was so cute, this little bug hotel. I don't know if I'd want to have bugs staying in my hotel though. I'm not really a bug person. My mom pointed these pumpkins out to me and she thought these would, were so cute. This is such a classy way to decorate for Halloween, I think. And it would be kind of an easy DIY project if you could find the right materials for it. I think this one would make for a really nice centerpiece for a small table. These are some really pretty floral stationery items. I was kind of attracted to this little thank you card set with the Monstera on it. So I have two Monsteras. What a pretty paperweight, right? I love these calendars. I think they're so pretty, but not super functional because they just have the dates all squished up on the bottom. So it's more of a piece of artwork than anything else. I think I'm going to try to find my go-to calendar, which is the Studio Ghibli Totoro calendar that comes out every year. If I can manage to find it, I'm going to get that one for the new year. I saw these all over the store and I thought this was so pretty. It's just a piece of wax shaped in a teardrop with these pressed flowers and leaves and sticks inside of them. But what a pretty thing to hang on your wall, right? I think it's slightly scented too, but I'm not sure. And they also made some larger candles which were equally as pretty. And I like how they display it in this glass jar with the rocks at the bottom. I feel like that's a nice way to make a candle safe because it's kind of a fire hazard, right? But you still have to keep an eye on it. This red and green one over here would be perfect for Christmas, I think. So it was by this brand called Rosy Rings. If you guys are looking for it, maybe you can find it online. Quite pricey though, about $20 for this little wax piece. I also saw these pumpkin shaped candles by Rosy Ring. Maybe if it was a little bit earlier in the Halloween season, I might go for one of these. But when I went, it was just a few days before Halloween, so. They had a lot of these dried flower bouquets here, and they do such a great job of putting together flower arrangements at Terrain, and I think during the fall, the dried flower bouquets look very festive. But it seems like a lot of these things you could just find on the ground. My mom commented that some of these seed pods down here were things that she'd seen in my sister's garden. They're just, you know, pieces of the, the flower that had been dried out. I thought these pots were so lovely. I really love these terracotta pots. I've sort of developed an appreciation for this after watching Rajiv Surrender's Instagram videos. Um, he goes to this place in Connecticut called Guy Wolf Pottery and works as an apprentice. And Guy Wolf makes all of Martha Stewart's pots and you know it must be a really good place if it's the only type of pot that Martha Stewart will use in her garden. So these ones came from a different place. I, if I recall correctly, I think it was somewhere in Europe. I can't imagine how much it would have cost to ship all of these over there, but because they're all quite heavy, but they're so beautiful, aren't they? And this was kind of cool. Poor butterflies, though. I used to really like those little pinned butterfly art pieces, but it's a little bit sad, right? These plates reminded me of Aura Keeley artwork. I don't know how I feel about doing different plates on my table for Thanksgiving or other holidays. It seems like it would be really nice to be able to change up the plates, but where would you store them all? These turkeys are really cute. I think I saw those at Paper Sources or by Mary Mary. When I look at them, they kind of remind me of the toilet paper rolls though, so maybe that would be a good DIY to do. Here are some placemats and other 
tableware for your Thanksgiving table. How many of you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? I know I have a lot of international viewers. Uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys celebrate. When I was living in Asia, I remember feeling like Christmas came so soon after Halloween because there was no Thanksgiving to sort of rain in the Christmas season to just December because without Thanksgiving, the next big holiday is Christmas and it can get a little out of control in my opinion. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting into the Thanksgiving spirit and sort of decorating and celebrating. When I was living in Seoul, every it seemed like every coffee shop that had sort of a modern, rustic farmhouse, industrial, I know that sounds really contradictory, but I'm not really sure how else to describe that aesthetic. Anyway, those coffee shops would always have a copy of Kinfolk magazine sitting on the shelf like a piece of art. I was pretty impressed by these embroidered napkins. Wow, the detail on these is pretty amazing and it made me want to do a little bit of embroidery myself, but these, I can't imagine the amount of work that would have gone into making them. So I think Terrain is run by the same company that owns Urban Outfitters and Anthropology, two stores that I really like in the US. And every time I come here, I just feel inspired to make something new. Like I thought these little glass bottles with the flowers inside were so pretty. It's something that looks deceptively simple to put together, but like did they use live flowers or dried flowers? Probably dried flowers, but then how did they get the dried flowers to look so pink? I was thinking I could totally make this at home, but then when I go home and try to make it, it'll probably look nothing like it. I thought these were so cool. These are like bath bombs that have flowers pressed into them. And then they have all these cute little jars that look like they're antique, although they're probably not. <laughs> And then this section has a lot of different um, skincare products. And I remember when Aesop was kind of like an unknown, unknown brand. And um, Terrain, I think, was one of the first places that I saw that. And now Aesop has blown up as like this huge soap store. And honestly, I still haven't bought a bottle of their $39 soap or $40 soap. But they always have um, the new and up and coming American or European uh, skincare products here. I don't think they really carry any Korean skincare. But I just noticed in general, a lot of the products that they tend to carry here, you might not be able to find at you know your ordinary stores. Um, and so I think it's fun to look around. It kind of feels like you're shopping at a high-end spa because the prices are definitely very high here. Everything is quite pricey. Um, so it's a nice place to purchase a gift for your friends or your mom or probably even yourself. That thing that I was just looking at is a Dream Deep Essential Oil Serum which has rose hips and other essential oils that's supposed to be good for um, nighttime. They have these linen waffle towels all over which seemed so luxurious. They were still quite pricey though. And then I thought this tray was really nice. These were natural loofah sponges. Have you guys ever found these on the beach? For the first time I found like a full chunk of loofah was uh, when I went to the beach in Crete, in Greece. And I honestly don't really use those loofah sponges. I tend to like the really rough scrubby towels that they sell in like the Asian stores. And this is a natural pumice stone. I was so tempted to get that um, because I do need to like scrub my feet with that, but I never end up taking the time to do that. I saw these things throughout the store. I thought these were so pretty. They just had like pressed flowers in this teardrop thing that you could hang on your wall. Over here they had some hand dyed scarves and they had a little card up on the wall about the artist. I love looking at these handmade items. So over here they had some more beauty tools, scrubbers, uh, cognac sponges. Sometimes, or a lot of times, the packaging really makes the product feel either luxurious or 
not luxurious. So this packaging was super minimalistic and had that muji like soothing feel. So sometimes you could take like a really basic product and you find a Daiso and if you package it up really nicely, um, then you could sell it for, I don't know, like three or four times the price. I'm not saying that you could do that with everything. I mean, there were a lot of things here that were really unique and um, are probably worth the money because somebody put their time and effort into developing these products. I don't know why, but I loved this soap bar. The packaging was so pretty and even though I, I have like a lifetime supply of the dead sea salt soap that I use, um, I was kind of tempted to get it. I thought it was really interesting how they use fur needles. It just feels so rustic. Kind of like I want to just go up to my log cabin in the forest that has the bathroom fully stocked with all of these pine products that has like this luxurious white bathtub overlooking the forest and just take a, a hot bath and scrub my feet with a stone and light one of those lovely smelling candles that they have. I don't actually have a log cabin in the forest. I'm just saying that's where I would use these. So over here they had this really cool vignette. I love how they had the chandelier there and all the lights. I think it would be such a fun job to work at the store and be in charge of the decorations and sourcing these cute little artisanal products like how fun would it be to travel the world and to buy things for terrain? That looks like one of those Turkish bath towels. And these are air plants. I mean, they look so much nicer here than they do in the Dongdaemun uh, flower market. I was so intrigued by this um, marble bowl that looks like a shell. It was just so fancy and I so wanted to get it. But I think that it was around $100. So quite pricey and also my house is not that nice. Um, I don't really have a spot to display that beautiful bowl, but one of these days maybe I will. Maybe I will redo my bathroom so that I can put that gorgeous marble bowl in there. I don't know why, but this little pack of uh, sea minerals to soak my feet in seemed really appealing. I mean, I think you just put them in a hot tub of water and then you can soak your feet and maybe scrub them a little bit. After the summer, my feet tend to get really, like, froze, so that kind of appealed to me. And then here's a larger bowl. You guys can see the price. I mean, the bigger ones are more expensive. I did notice that these said on the bottom that they were made in India. So I can't imagine what kind of work it would take to carve that out of marble. And here are some more air plants. Also very expensive. $18 for that air plant. Um, quite pricey. And then they had this beauty brush bar. For some reason this kind of stuff reminds me of Gwyneth Paltrow because I remember I watched this video about her talking about dry brushing where you use one of these bristle brushes and you brush your body before you take a shower I think it's to like help remove your dead skin but in um, in Korea or maybe Japan even you can achieve that result by soaking in water and then scrubbing yourself with one of those really scrubby towels so this is a sale section I did not know that there's a sale section in train I'm always attracted to these sections um, and yeah, they had a lot of bowls and things. You know, just because it's on sale doesn't mean it's cheap. I mean, this little uh, camp cocktail mixture was still quite expensive, reduced from $26 to $19. I mean, I would love to go camping and pour a bottle of spirits into this and just set it out. Um, not that I ever go camping. I mean, something on my to-do list. But I don't think I've gone camping since I was a child. And I don't think that my husband is interested in going camping. We're not exactly camping people. 
yet. Maybe we will be one of these days. So the thing that kind of turns me off about camping is the bathroom situation. I don't really like the idea of taking a shower in a shared bathroom. And I remember when I went camping as a child, sometimes the water would be cold and you'd have to wear your flip-flops in the shower and that just doesn't appeal to me. These mittens were so nice. They seemed so luxurious. This is another thing that I would have to take to my imaginary mountain cabin. So cozy and so warm. Aren't these little trays pretty? They kind of remind me of the mother of pearl boxes that you can find in Korea. That one said it was made in India. So, another thing that I would love to put in my house, but unfortunately I don't know if I have the architecture to properly display it. So now we're coming over to the kitchen section it looks like, and they have all of these pretty dishes. And then there's a section with the Bloody Mary cocktail mix. I've seen this at the terrain near my house. Ter this used to be the only terrain, and I'm, I went here uh, every once in a while when I lived in the US. And then I moved to Japan and Korea, and we were gone for like seven years. And I came back and they had small terrain shops all, over, all throughout the country. So luckily I do have one near my home, but this is like the big one. The one by my house is inside of an anthropology store and it's quite small and it has a few plants. But um, this place is definitely a lot nicer and a lot bigger. So here are some more of those camp cocktail mixes. This one has sort of a fall theme, pumpkin smash. And it just looks so rustic and pretty. I really wanted to get one of these. I mean, I wonder if you could take Trader Joe's fruit, dried fruit and make your own. It says it contains vegan sugar, but isn't all sugar vegan? They did make it into like a really pretty bar though. So truffle honey is something that my husband likes. Sometimes we make our own cheese boards at home and it, it's a nice addition to just drizzle on top of cheese. And after living in Asia, I started eating honey with savory things that have cheese on it because it tastes nice to just have a touch of sweetness. So for instance, I think I had, I first tried honey on my pizza in Japan and it was really, really good. So now I always want to eat honey with my pizza or dip it in like a really rich butter garlic sauce. And then it also tastes really good on grilled cheese. So truffle salt with grilled cheese or truffle honey with grilled cheese is really delicious. Highly recommend it. So I got that mini flower pot bread kit at the other terrain that I went to and I'm looking forward to making it. I wanted to film a video of it. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. This uh, vintage bottle, which is crazy expensive, kind of reminded me of the soap dispenser that Rajiv Surrender had in his uh, My Homemade Home kitchen tour. Um, but it was way out of my price range. I always love looking at the little unique food items. Look at those pretty, pretty pieces of sugar. Wouldn't that just look so gorgeous, like next to a latte on your little saucer? Here's another example of really amazing packaging. I like how they call the maple syrup tree juice and then they infuse it with different spices like cinnamon. And oh my gosh, I so wanted to buy this bottle of popcorn. I mean, I never end up making popcorn from kernels. I'm too lazy. I always just get the, the microwavable bags, but that would look so pretty sitting in my kitchen. The other thing to keep in mind about popcorn is that it does have an expiration date. So even the Orville Redenbacher popcorn that you buy from the grocery store will expire after like a year or something. So if you don't use it that often, then you shouldn't buy a big bottle. Over here they have some more little cocktail jars and aren't these cups fun? They have these cute little figurines inside the glasses. So this would be such a fun um, addition to your glass collection if you have one. Hot toddy mixture. 
Ooh, everything here looks so good, but unfortunately, I don't really drink much. And I don't think that I would ever consume this kind of stuff. This one looks so yummy and cozy. Look at those marshmallows. And I love ginger. When I was a kid, I hated ginger. I thought it was such an off-putting flavor. But as an adult, I love it. I thought this teapot was so cute. You could put your camp cocktail into the teapot and it would look so pretty. And then here's a sangria mix. I would probably drink the sangria, honestly. I do, I do sometimes drink wine, but not very often. So one of the things I really liked about the store was how they had these different books throughout. Um, I can't imagine making my bag own bagels at home. That seems like it would be so difficult. And then these are little butter mixes. So at Terrain, when they give you that bread in the pot, sometimes they season their butters. I think ours was a lavender butter. And so these are little spice packets that you can put in to season your flower pot, but the butter that you use for your flower pot. These are tea towels. I have a thing for tea towels. I, I like to buy vintage ones on eBay because I like the ones that are made out of 100% linen um, and they tend not to make those nowadays. These are really interesting. These beeswax wraps. I've purchased some beeswax wraps in the past. I haven't seen anything with these kinds of pretty designs on them. Um, they are nice to use because you can avoid using plastic but eventually they do start to wear out and you have to throw them away. Do you guys use seasonal dishes or do you have special dishes that you use for Thanksgiving? When I got married, I registered for a bunch of really nice dishes and a lot of those things I don't really use unless I have a formal meal. And the only time I ever really have a formal meal is for Thanksgiving. And so since I was living in Asia for many years, I put all those, a lot of those things into storage. And so I'm kind of excited to have a nice Thanksgiving this year and be able to use all my dishes. Over here, it seemed like they had some special, you know, Thanksgiving place settings, placemats, candle holders. This I thought was so pretty. This is something that said it was made in the Philippines and it's like a cover that you can probably put on your food or maybe a placemat. I thought it was so pretty how I had the bees embroidered into it. Um, but it seems like when that gets dirty, it might be kind of hard to clean. Aren't these pumpkin planters fun? They're such a nice fall item. And then we're coming over to the area with the terrariums and every time I come to terrain I really want to make another terrarium so I, I know I've purchased at least one of these sets. I have like a nice jar. I like how they mix up the plants and inanimate objects like the pumpkin. Um, it's so festive for fall and you could also put in something like a little mini figure, a Totoro figure or a Sanrio figure to make it cute. And it looks like they have a mixture of dried leaves and flowers and also live plants and just rocks and things like that. So it's a really nice way to create a centerpiece or something seasonal. But they're not that easy to care for. A lot of times I'll put together a terrarium and um, and then everything it will just die because I forgot to water it. So they can be kind of sensitive. If you buy them pre-made, they're quite pricey. I think they were probably ranging from about 30 to 50 to maybe over $100 for some of the larger ones. And so that's kind of expensive. But if you have your own glass jars at home, you can try to make them. The only thing is, it looks like the ones here take a little bit of everything. So 
you know, the the Spanish moss and the little shells or, or rocks, you have to buy everything. And, and so, and then you end up with leftovers. So maybe it would be fun to do this as a group project and get a group of people together and then you could split up all the items because you probably won't use like a whole box of Spanish moss for instance. But if you split it up among your friends, then you can break up the cost that way and also get a greater variety of things in your terrarium. So here's the Spanish moss. I love the, oh, reindeer moss. I guess that's what it's called. I love the colored pieces. I don't know if you can find that at your typical craft store. So uh, maybe that's why most of those are gone. Have all different kinds of mosses, so many fun shapes of jars that you might not necessarily be able to find at your local craft store. What I was kind of looking for here that I didn't see was a book on terrarium so that I could sort of learn how to put together my own. I mean, I think they might give you a card, or, or last time I purchased one here they had a little card that told, told you how to put it together. But I mean, I would imagine that you'd have to combine plants that had a similar uh, light and watering scheme or schedule because if you put like a plant that needs a lot of water with one that doesn't, then one of those plants will inevitably die. So you probably have to think about that when you're putting these together. I would love to put an orchid into a terrarium, but I am notorious for killing my orchids. They're so hard to care for, they're so delicate. Um, so leave me a comment below if you guys have any tips on caring for orchids. Up here they had some of those glass boxes that they were displaying in the cafe. I think they're so pretty. Honestly, they have a really nice variety of plants here, but Everything is really quite pricey, and if you go to your local nursery, they'll probably be cheaper, I think. But they do have a really good variety. I mean, I don't think I've seen this big variety of succulents at my local plant store. So, over here, they had some really pretty flower arrangements, and I like how they had these little coffee table books interspersed throughout the store. I really wanted to just sit and look at all of them. Like, this one looked so interesting, and there's another flower book, which I also wanted to look at. But you can only really have so many coffee table books, and I think I've reached my maximum. Especially because we don't have a coffee table anymore. I think we got rid of it after um, we had my daughter. But look, aren't these little arrangements so pretty? So, let me know, what did you guys think of this place? This is one of my favorite places to go, but I don't know if this is the kind of content that you guys are interested in because I normally post a lot of really kawaii, Japanese, stationery themed videos and this is a little bit more of a rustic farmhouse feel, but I think it's still a really cool place and so I thought you guys might be interested in checking it out along with me. Um, and I didn't want to split it into two videos. I was tempted to just because of how long this is, but I don't know if this is the type of content that you guys are interested in. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to leave me a comment below and let me know. I'm always in the constant process of fixing up my house and trying to make it look nice. I moved in a year ago and I still feel like it's so unfinished. I mean, there are certain things that we've acquired over time and we have decorated some spaces, but there's still a long way to go, and I'm not the type of person to buy everything at once. I like to buy things slowly, only when I see something that catches my eye that I really feel um, that spark of joy, but um, it takes a while to, to fix up your house when that's your mentality. So maybe that's the reason I haven't done a home tour video yet. But I'm in the process of fixing up my office space right now. When we moved in, I just put everything away anywhere so that we didn't have a massive mess all over our house. And now I'm slowly working on arranging things in a way that is very pleasing to me. So let me know if you guys want to see some of that home content. So now I'm going to do a short little haul video. I found these purple 
spray painted flowers in the sale section and this is this color is my aesthetic and I wanted to get some pink pampas grass but I've just never gotten it so I thought this would be a nice substitute and I'm gonna put this in my um, living room sitting room area this was on sale for $9.95 I think the original price was around $24 I picked this up for my husband. He is really into food and eating, so uh, we were running out of our truffle honey and he's the one who eats it a lot, so I thought that I would get this for him. And then for myself, I got this grapefruit pine candle. I'm not really a candle person, but I just fell in love with the scent. They had this burning in the bathroom at Terrain and then I saw it in the store. And then this is a... Um, Citronella verbena mosquito repellent. We have so many mosquitoes in the summer, so I thought this would come in handy, even though they've kind of gone away for now. And of course, I had to get this cute little mousy mouse. It was right like before Halloween when we went there, like I said, so I probably won't be using this this year. I did put it up for a little while, but Halloween's over. But I'm slowly building up a collection of cute little Halloween goodies. So this mouse is going to go into the cabinet and come out next year around Halloween. And I also got this uh, foot soak. It's a eucalyptus peppermint foot soak. And my feet are in need of some TLC, so I thought I would give this a try. I just want to give a big thank you to all my Patreons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then let me know in the comments below. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.